Welcome to the refresher course for registrars and others using the PowerSchool enrollment program. Today we'll focus on new student registration, which is accomplished in four stages. First, the student's parent or guardian must complete the online registration form. Second, the registrar will approve the application and match any information from other students in the district. Third, PowerSchool will deliver the information to eSchool electronically. And finally, the registrar will double check the records within eSchool. The first stage is simple. If they have not already, have the parent or guardian go to the district homepage and click Enrollment in Umbel ISD in the Quick Links bar on the left side of the page. Then, click the button for the online registration software. There will also be a short video guiding parents on how to use this software. Now, let's discuss the procedure for completing the registration in PowerSchool. To log into PowerSchool, open My Umbel and click on the PS Enrollment icon here. Once logged into PowerSchool, click on New Student Enrollment. Here, you can search for students who have had a registration form submitted. Make sure you are viewing students who are pending approval by clicking here. Once you have found the student you want to work on, check the box next to their name, and then click the Edit button here. On this page, you can confirm or make changes to what was entered in the registration form. Take note of the fields with blue text, as these contain information that must be entered by the registrar before the record can be approved. Tags will be automatically generated from the information from the online registration form, but there are three in particular that require edits if checked. Failed address verification, no ethnicity, and no race. If failed address verification is checked, double check that the entered address does not contain any typos. Here, you'll notice that instead of 20200, I've put 20201. I can make the change and save it. And then I can hit the Verify Addresses button over here. When I verify the address, you'll notice that the blue text has changed to match, and the failed address verification is now unchecked, indicating that it is now correct. If the no ethnicity and no race boxes are checked, assign the values manually in the fields. Then uncheck the boxes. If the student's social security number has been entered, but a card has not been uploaded or shown to you, remove the SSN number from the field. Make sure to get a photocopy of the card if it's brought to campus. You will also want to double check the documents that have been uploaded to ensure that acceptable forms have been used. For example, if you go down to the bottom under Uploaded Documents, when you click on one of the forms, it will download to your desktop, and then you can check what it is. This is not a birth certificate. It is not an acceptable form of documentation. You can easily print other required forms by going to the Tasks header and clicking the Print Forms button. Several forms are available here, such as the HLS form that all new students to the district must have on file. Once the parent signs this form, or any others, scan it manually into LaserFish. In the Contacts tab, verify that all fields marked with P1 are correct for the primary guardian. Remember that any guardian who wants to have a hack account must have an email listed. While you're here, make sure the correct correspondence language is selected. This will affect the language of the emails they receive as well as their hack interface. Then continue to verify the information for each listed parent or guardian. Anything with the letter E before it marks an emergency contact. You may want to ask the parents that you have in your meetings whether or not they'd like to add any further emergency contacts, which you can do here. In the Previous School Additional and Transportation tabs, make sure that all relevant information is listed correctly. The Transportation tab is optional for the time being. In the Enrollment tab, check that the School-Admin field is correct. If a transfer has been approved, the school admin may be different than the zone school, but then you will need to change the override code to L and provide a reason, which should be identified on the transfer paperwork. 
enter the appropriate calendar, entry code, and entry date in order to proceed. Once all the information is entered correctly, you should see that the Approve option has become available. All fields with blue text in the Demographics and Enrollment tabs must be filled out in order to approve. You can click Approve and Continue down here. Now that you've checked, corrected, and approved the registration information, it's time to deliver that info to eSchool. Once you have clicked Approve and Continue, click Return to Manage Data at the bottom. Then change your view to Pending Delivery. Check the box next to the student's name, and then click the drop-down next to Tasks to go to the Deliver Data page. Here, you should make sure that you click Selected Only so that you only are delivering the data for the one student. Then you will need to click Create Delivery Batch to begin the data delivery process. Before you deliver the data to eSchool, you need to match the profiles that already exist in the system. A yellow match orb indicates that a potential match exists, and you'll need to verify if the student or guardian is already in the system. A green match orb indicates that a match has been verified and that the data will be delivered to the existing record. Click the Match button to explore the potential match. Don't be confused by another student with the same name. Ensure that the birthday and address are the same to confirm. If they are, you'll hit select for the match over here. If they are not, click no match. That will turn your yellow orb to, blue, uh, to gray. You'll want to repeat this process for each guardian. You'll note that we're now on Leia Skywalker's student record. So when we see Owen Lars, I can come into the match and see that he is already listed from our record with Luke. I'll select him as a match which will turn the orb green. I'll want to do that with each guardian. And that will make sure our records all line up. Do note that with emergency contacts, we never match. So make sure that you go into each emergency contact that has a yellow orb and click the no match button. Once you have finished with matches and edits, you may click deliver record. Only click this button one time. Each time you click Deliver Record, a new individual student record will be created in eSchool. If you have an error delivering, check the top of the page to find out what needs to be fixed. Make the changes and try again. However, if it works correctly, you'll see this green message. This record has been delivered. You may deliver it again if necessary. Please do not deliver it again. As I said, each time you click Deliver Record, a new student will be entered into the system. That's not what we want. You will also notice that the green orb is now here. It was gray because there was not a student with this name. Now, since the student is in the system, you see a green orb listed. Finally, make sure you click Close Delivery Batch whenever you're done delivering data. This will ensure that you don't duplicate delivery records later on. After closing the delivery batch, you'll notice that you're brought back to the New Student Enrollment Forms page under the view Delivered. You'll also notice that you have a student ID for your new student. You can use this to look them up in eSchool. Now that you have a student ID, you are ready to log into eSchool itself and verify the data, as well as add any additional information. Great job on enrolling new students into eSchool through PowerSchool. If you have any questions, please refer to your PowerSchool enrollment manual, use the help icon in PowerSchool itself, or call the Umbel ISD help desk. Thanks for all your hard work.